Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at factors that influence gas pressure. Now remember that gas pressure is the pressure exerted on the walls of a container from the particles of the gas running into the container. So force is pressure over an area. Gas pressure is force that comes from these particles running into the wall. And we can see that here. We've got a little gauge that's going to tell us the pressure. And then if I put some gas in there, we can see that as these particles start running into the wall, the pressure begins to go up. So once these have spread out throughout the entire container, our pressure should equalize. And it looks like it's going to do that somewhere around, uh, it's still going back and forth, but we'll call it somewhere around 1.2 atmospheres, uh, however it settles out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run an experiment. We're going to pick one thing and we're going to change it and see how that affects everything else. So the first thing we're going to look at is the impact of how much gas is in here, the number of gas particles on the pressure. So with this many gas particles, we've got about 1.2 atmospheres of pressure. Remember, it's fluctuating back and forth, but that's okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this very top part and we're going to slide that over and let some of the gas out. And what I want you to do is, as I let these gas particles out, I want you to watch what happens to the pressure. So here we go. We slide it, we let some of them out, and look at the pressure dropping. What this tells us is that there is a directly proportional relationship between the number of particles and the pressure. When the number of particles goes down, so does the pressure. Let's see if it works the other way. Let's add particles and watch what the pressure does. Here it's about 0.9 atmospheres, and let's just add more gas. And as we do, we see that the pressure increases, and now it's climbed almost to 1.6 atmospheres. So we know that gas pressure d depends on the number of particles. The more particles there are, the more gas pressure. This makes sense, since the pressure comes from the particles running into the side of the wall. All right, let's look at something else. Let's look at the temperature. So right now, the temperature of this is 300 Kelvin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the temperature and see how that affects pressure. So again, let's watch our pressure gauge here. It's at about 1.7. And now I'm just going to add some heat. And watch as the pressure climbs. And it climbs almost too fast. Let's cool it back down before it blows the top off of our box. But notice that as I increase the temperature, pressure went up. And as I decrease the temperature, let's drop it a little bit, notice how the pressure goes down. Now this also makes sense because part of the pressure is the force with which those particles are hitting the wall. The faster they're moving, that is the higher the temperature, the harder they're going to hit that wall. So if I increase the temperature, that is increase the speed of those particles, pressure will go up. If I decrease their speed, pressure goes down. So just like the number of particles, temperature is directly proportional to the pressure. If temperature goes up, pressure will also go up. If temperature goes down, pressure goes down. So just recapping, so far temperature and number of particles are both directly proportional to the pressure. If one goes up, the other goes up. Now we're going to look at volume. And what I'm going to do for this is now I'm going to control this little, what you call it, a puppet maybe? I'm going to control the little puppet and change the volume of the container. I can squeeze it in or I can make it go out and we want to see what happens to the pressure. So let's start by making the volume bigger. That is, I will take this and drag it that way and we'll see what happens to the pressure, which right now is about 2.3 five, six, it's going up and down, somewhere in there. So let's take a look at it. As I expand this outward, the pressure falls. Now this also makes sense if you stop and think about it, because pressure comes from these things hitting the wall. If I move the walls farther apart, there's going to be more atoms here in the middle that aren't hitting a wall at any particular time. And so the pressure goes down. So as volume got bigger, pressure got smaller. Let's see if it works the other way. Let's decrease the volume and watch what happens to the pressure. 
as I decrease the volume, the pressure goes up. That is, I'm squeezing them in such a way that they hit the wall more often. So pressure and volume are inversely proportional. That is, when one goes up, the other one goes down. So as volume increases, pressure decreases, and vice versa. So three factors that we're interested in. The number of particles, the temperature, and the volume. As the number of particles increases, so does pressure. As the temperature increases, pressure does too. And as volume increases, pressure will actually decrease. And there's really nothing for this other than to memorize it. You can just straight up memorize it and just commit that to memory. That's okay. A better way would be to understand why, to think about that pressure as being from collisions of these particles with the wall. And if you do that, you'll understand this and be able to figure it out on the fly as opposed to having to rely on memory. But either way, something you definitely need to know, especially as we go forward and start dealing with uh, gas law problems.